I wanted to do another example for you um, of minimize a function using a for input Carnot map. Um, but this time, suppose our function is given to us as a sum of min terms. So if we want to reduce, let's say for example, our function is um, the sum of min terms 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13. So this is a lot of terms. If we had to use Boolean algebra, this would be like a, a monstrous function to have to reduce. Um, so instead we're going to put this into our for input Carnot map and to construct that I put A and B on the left side, I put C and D up on the top, and now all the input combinations for A and B are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. This is in gray code instead of regular BCD. For CD, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, also in gray code. We have to do that so that there's only one bit change between each of the numbers. And now um, I know that if I made a truth table and wrote out um, what are the inputs that give me a particular min term, I know that this is min term 0, min term 1, skip 1, min term 2, back for min term 3. This is min term 4, min term 5, skip 1 for min term 6, and back for min term 7. And since we made this in gray code, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. That's why we have to skip over when we are doing the mapping of our min terms. So we did this not only in the horizontal direction, but in the vertical direction as well. So that means if this is the first row of min terms, the second, we need to skip a row for the third and come back for the fourth. So that makes this min term 8, min term 9, skip 1, min term 10, back for min term 11, and then back to this third row for min term 12, min term 13, skip 1 for min term 14, and back for min term 15. So now it's easy, I just look at my list of min terms and wherever I see a number, I'm going to put in a 1 in that location. So I have a 1 at min term 0. 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8, and 9, and 12, and 13. And then everywhere else that's not on this list, I know I'm going to have a 0 there. 0, 0, 0. So you don't have to write these little subscript min terms in here. This is just to help me so that I know how to map this list correctly into the right location on the K map. So suppose you were given this as not a sum of min terms, but a product of max terms. So that list would be basically where all the locations of the zeros are. So this is going to correspond to product of max terms, and that would be whatever number is not in this list. So you could just basically go through and count, and whatever's not there will be in this list. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is in the list, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but 10 is not in the list, 11 is not in the list, 12, 13, 14, and 15 is the last um, number if we have four inputs. So either way, if you're given the function in min term or max term notation, you can put it into this K map. If it's in max term notation, you know where all the zeros are. If it's in min term notation, these locations give you where all the ones are. Okay, great. So now we're ready to do our groupings. So as you can see, we have um, a column of ones, a column of ones, and a row of ones here. Um, we could group, make all these groups of, we could do a group of four, a group of four, and a group of two. But we're going to get the best simplification the more bits we can group together. Um, so be careful because we can't group groups of five or six. We can only do two, four, um, 8 and 16. So it has to be in 2 to the n form. So let's go ahead and make this nice big giant group of 8 right there. And then instead of just doing um, these two grouped together, let's go ahead and group the whole row. And even though um, these bits here are already in the blue group, if I can group four bits with these instead of just these two, I'm going to get a bigger reduction. Okay, great. So then for our blue group, um, what do we have? Well, 
A and B, since this spans the, all of the rows, we know that A can be either 0 or 1, and we'll have 1's in this blue, blue group. So this is either. B, same story. If B is 0 or 1, it doesn't matter. We're going to have 1's in our blue group, either. How about C? Well, C is 0 with, um, between these two columns. So C must be 0, and D can be either 0 or 1, and we'll have 1's in our blue group. So D is also either. So this is a great reduction because the only literal that matters here is C, and we need C to be 0, so we complement it. And then the other group that we have is the orange group. In this orange group, we have the entire row here, and the values for A and B for this row is A is 0, and B is 1, and then C and D basically don't matter at all because if C is 0 or C is 1, we're going to have 1's in this orange group, and if D is 0, 1, 1, 0, doesn't matter, we're going to have 1's in this orange group. So C and D are both either. That means that my literals are A not B. So then what I do is I just take these product terms and to get my reduced F, I just OR them together. So this is C naught OR A naught B. And this is my simplified function that um, I got from the Carnot map rather than using Boolean algebra to um, simplify it down. So let me know if you have any questions about strategies for the groupings. Always more groupings is best, and you can reuse bits that are in other groupings. And um, wraparound groupings are good. Groups of 2, 4, 8, 16 are good. And um, yeah, in the next video, I will um, introduce what a don't care is.